What's going on guys? This is going to be a very casual one take video, mostly because I don't want to edit. I'm just feeling lazy, but secondarily, because a lot of people tell me they like the kind of laid back ones I occasionally do where it's just one take. It doesn't, you know, have a lot of prep necessarily. Um, there are some things I want to talk about in this video and there are specifically some misconceptions in the vinyl community. And I have done videos like this in the past. I have one about vinyl myth busting. I have one recently I did that's about um, you know, things I wish I knew before I got into vinyl. This is a little different because these are a few things that I think a lot of people don't know. Some of them people do, but ultimately worth discussing. And I have them on a list right here. So I'm going to read them and I'm going to share my thoughts on them. And hopefully it'll help you whether you are new or old to the hobby. Uh, didn't make a lot of sense, but you get what I'm saying. So there's going to be some mistakes. This is a little one take casual video, but I hope you enjoy. Um, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. We have 400 plus videos and it's awesome. I say we, it's mostly me. Uh, well, let's get started. All right, the first one is not something I'm gonna talk about in this video. It is that black vinyl sounds better than colored vinyl. It is categorically untrue. Occasionally it's true, but not always. And I have a whole video about that. So go look on the channel after this for that video in particular. I think uh, you might enjoy that. But let's get into the real misconceptions I wanna talk about. The first one is that vinyl sounds better than CDs or digital. So this is kind of a complicated issue because uh, that's something people throw around a lot, especially people that are like new to the hobby and they're like, oh my God, it sounds so much better. And uh, to an extent it can, and it does, but to another extent, it, it just objectively does not. And I'll explain. So vinyl sounds different than digital. It's not a better sound, it's a different sound. Um, I prefer it um, because when it's done properly with the proper analog recording through a good system it really brings a lot of recordings to life it gives you the warmth everyone talks about you know the pops and clicks are not meant to be there some people like it i don't know why they do but uh for me i don't enjoy that aspect of it but ultimately it's something special to have a ritual to put on an album enjoy the full-size cover art you know the reason we love vinyl is because it has this kind of uh, you know grand feeling of all of these things combining to this one experience versus just hitting like play on a playlist or popping a CD somewhere. I don't even have a place to play CDs these days, but um, it doesn't sound better. Uh, it can sound better. Like a really good high quality, like Mobile Fidelity or Analog Productions recording definitely sounds better than any other version of whatever album that may be to me. Um, but ultimately CD is just cleaner. Uh, you have no audio artifacting, any no imperfections. It's just gonna be the most clean replication of sound possible. And when you get to stuff like, you know, hi-fi streaming, that's probably the best way that most albums, especially modern albums are going to sound. So this is just a misconception because it's like vinyl is not always better. And that's not the main reason people get into vinyl. It's because they want that ritual. It's because they like collecting things and it's more fun collecting vinyl than CDs, just almost objectively. So that's the first one. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that in the comments as well as all of these, but let's continue. Um, Bluetooth for vinyl is a great option. It isn't. I've seen so many people lately talk about getting a new turntable and, uh, you know, it has a Bluetooth capability. And while, yeah, I guess that's convenient to be able to listen to uh, your vinyl throughout the house or however you have your Bluetooth speakers set up, uh, it defeats the entire point of vinyl. Now, vinyl is meant to be an analog source of listening to your music where it's all connected through hardwired products. When you digitize the signal through Bluetooth, you're defeating the entire point of vinyl. And I'm not here to tell you, hey, you're wrong if you listen via Bluetooth or like don't enjoy your music. But I will say if you are trying to get that authentic vinyl listening experience, listening through Bluetooth is not gonna do it for you. You're not gonna really understand um, sonically why people love records. You're just gonna um, continue listening virtually the same as if you were streaming on Spotify or however else you may listen to music through the magical waves in the sky. So uh, for me, I think if you're looking to get into vinyl and, uh, and understand why people love the, the sound that vinyl has the capability of producing, Bluetooth is not the way to go. The third one, and this is a big one. I don't think I've really talked about this one a lot. Um, actually, in the, the next few, let's just get into it. So uh, misconception, you can trust big box stores online to fulfill your vinyl pre-orders. I gotta tell you, this is something I've learned the hard way so many times. Um, when you pre-order something on Amazon, Walmart, Barnes and Noble, those are three of the biggest offenders. Uh, I'd say there's like a coin flip at best that you're gonna get that item. A lot of these sites put up pre-orders for things that are often limited. 
and um you know they have the pricing there you can order it it seems like it's all good to go but ultimately unfortunately they don't get fulfillment for a lot of this because if things are as limited as they are expected to be they often won't get nearly as much allocation as they will get orders, if any at all. The amount of times I've ordered a record on Amazon and then all of a sudden it canceled my pre-order like four months later after it's already sold out everywhere else, it's infuriating. So if you're looking to get a, a something that's not gonna be extremely common, like a, just like a standard black pressing of something that's gonna be everywhere, um, if you're looking to get something that has any source of uh, limited nature to it, do not risk pre-ordering it on one of the big box store sites. They're just gonna most likely cancel it. And now occasionally they will come through, but I don't think it's worth, if you're really like desperate for this record, putting all your eggs in that basket. And I think that's something that I've fallen into even as recently as a couple years ago. Um, and I know a lot of new collectors will probably fall prey to that too. So just something to keep in mind. The next one is that popular classic albums should be more expensive than other classic albums. I mean, when you go to a record store that doesn't price their records well, you'll often see that, let's say, you know, a common Genesis record will be $5, $8. And then you might see a Pink Floyd record at $30. Um, it doesn't make sense. Outside of very specific pressings of some of these albums, like if it's like a you know, from the original tapes reissue, or it's a MoFi version, or it's like a first press or a Japanese with an OV strip, something unique, I would get why that would be plussed up in price. But a lot of stores tend to do this thing where they intentionally or not, I don't want to assume it's always malicious, but it feels like they're capitalizing on the brand new and casual record fan who just assumes, oh, the Beatles Abbey Road is going to be, you know, it's a rare record. It's the Beatles. Like it has to be worth this $25 price tag in, you know, VG plus condition. It's just not true. Um, they pressed such an enormous amount of these records. It's like almost ridiculous how many copies of Thriller and The Beatles and Pink Floyd exist out there in the world across all the various pressings. And you shouldn't overpay for these pressings just because they're more popular from that era. Um, oftentimes you can find uh, stores that price them properly, which is great. But if you go to a store and it seems overpriced, I mean, always double check, you know, go on Discogs, try to see comparably for that quality, whether it's VG plus or near mint, whatever it may be, try to see what they're charging for. Go to eBay. I mean, actually don't go to eBay. That's going to be another source of people just throwing up things for random prices that don't make sense. Uh, but yeah, I just want to say, be careful when you're buying these classic records, like outside of, like I said, specific pressings, you don't want to get suckered in to overspending on a record that doesn't have that actual value. A lot of the rarest, most expensive records these days, outside of like really obscure, like psychedelia from the seventies and you know, certain like jazz and blues and soul stuff from like that era. Honestly, the modern records are the ones that are commanding huge prices in the aftermarket. And that's because uh, fans of, you know, younger fans are willing to pay it often. Um, and which is perpetuating the cycle of the aftermarket. So uh, just be careful when you are overpaying for like a Led Zeppelin record because uh, you don't have to, you shouldn't have to. There's so many of them. Uh, the next one is, and I have touched on this before, that it is safe to pay somebody for a record you're buying through PayPal friends and family or through Venmo or Zelle or Cash App or whatever it may be. The answer is a resounding no. If you don't know the person and trust them, like if I've dealt with someone in the past and I know they're good or if I know them in real life, I do friends and family sometimes because there's no fee associated and you know it sometimes works out better for all parties involved. But Ultimately, if you don't know this person, this is the number one p way people get scammed because unfortunately, these sites don't have a buyer seller protection where if you were going to go and purchase something and then it's not as it described or they don't actually send it to you, you have no recourse. It's looked at by these platforms like you just gave someone money. And uh, that sucks because a lot of people don't know that. It's not super obvious. Um, with PayPal, always use goods and services. If anything goes wrong, PayPal will protect you. I've never been, I've oh, let me not do a double negative. I've always been protected by PayPal in situations that were kind of shady. I've always felt like they had my back in just about every single scenario. So that's good. And Venmo, since my last time I talked about this in a video a few years ago, has recently added a goods and services type payment, um, which I believe has very similar protections. I can't personally speak to how well they protect you. I've never used it, but definitely a step in the right direction for having an alternative to PayPal 
if you are trying to do some buying selling online on Facebook or Reddit or whoever it may be. Just make sure you protect yourself. If someone insists, oh, I wanna do it friends and family, that's a red flag. And last but not least, this is a huge one that I feel like a lot of people don't know or don't think to like investigate. So I'm gonna set the record straight. It is illegal for a company to hold your money for a product that's not going to be shipping or even created for months and months. Uh, a lot of labels, a lot of you know sites will have like no cancellations or when you buy something on eBay, someone will say like no refunds. Um, they could say whatever they want, but if you pay with PayPal and even to an extent your credit card with a chargeback, you have 180 days from when you make that purchase to dispute it if something's wrong. If, you know, if someone, if you decide you don't want a record and it's not shipping for six months, which is kind of the timeline these days, and they say, oh, sorry, no cancellations, that's not accurate. They can't do that. Legally, they can't do that. If you go to PayPal and you try to cancel it with a dispute, it will cancel. They will, they will say they can't send you a tracking number because it doesn't exist yet. Um, I know that, you know, can hurt labels every now and again, and you shouldn't be just willy nilly ordering things and then just canceling them on a whim. But that being said, you do have these rights as a consumer that a lot of uh, places try to kind of get around. Um, I see this happen sometimes with like limited variants where people put up a variant, um, and people think it's the only one and then either a cheaper or better variant comes along after the fact from another site and then like oh no cancellations it's like well i mean you can cancel if you want uh that's kind of the name of the game these days of just waiting for different variants to come come up and uh seeing which one you want to get but ultimately the point of this little mini rant segment is that you have the right as the buyer if you know if the item doesn't exist yet they can't legally hold your money so that's just something to keep in mind um but again don't go and cancel things just out of nowhere because it does you know take a hit to the the label and if it's a small label that can kind of affect them if people start canceling left and right something it's a double-edged sword but it's definitely worth knowing in your buyer repertoire so that you are informed as a buyer so those are my tips for this video but i would love to hear some more of yours because i know there's a ton more misconceptions that um i would have loved to have known when i first got into vinyl and i'm still learning as i continue my journey through this expensive inconvenient but ultimately very rewarding hobby so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this one take video um with no edits i think i did pretty well no uh no uh, i think i just talked straight for 12 and a half minutes but uh let me know what you think in the comments if you like this style of video they're very easy for me to do so i'll do more of them if so uh and hopefully some news about the record store very soon very very soon there's uh, big things coming so thanks for watching guys as always uh take it easy more videos soon